Speaking of death, what's the closest you've ever come to dying? I have a theory that most friends or relatives don't know how close. Mm, I, I'm a, I've led a charmed life. You know, I, you know, the problem is you never know. I mean, two years ago, this July, my sister went in for uh, surgery, and uh, it was uh, to have a bone fused in her ankle mm -hmm. and it was what do you call it elective surgery at the time because she didn't have to do it mm -hmm. and the morning after the surgery she died because she had a it's blood terrible. clot so so i think you're always on the edge mm -hmm. if you cross the street in new york if you've had a hip replaced or a you know a knee partially replaced mm -hmm. you're always running a risk Mm. And uh, I think we're all always dancing with death in a crazy kind of a way. That's kind of why I ask. So even as a kid, not a near-death experience, a car oh, accident. I once ran across the street and almost got hit, almost got hit by a car. I've never. Uh, a month ago, I was carrying my wife's skis. I fell down three steps, hmm. banged my head. Oh. There was blood all over oh the parking my God. lot. They came, with, they came with an EMS car, uh, ambulance to take me to the hospital. And honestly, other than some blood that they had to come use bleach to get out, everyone assumed I was had a brain injury or wow. unconscious. Or when did nothing. this happen? It happened in uh, February. February in where? In uh, Snowmass, Colorado, in the shopping center. What are you proudest of in your life, the most proudest of in life? Well, I'm proudest of the fact that I have two sons that have been through college and law school and a wife of over 50 years, mm -hmm. and we're still an intact family, okay. or at least as intact as most families. Sure. From a professional perspective, I'm proudest of the fact that I uh, played some small part in demonstrating that uh, America could be persuaded to focus on merit and performance rather than race mm -hmm. uh, in choosing what sport to follow. Mm -hmm. Because I think that clears the way for the application of that principle mm -hmm. across the board. Sports might be the cutting edge, but the reality is that uh, you come to the NBA, if you've got game, you play. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter where you came from right. or what color you are mm -hmm. show me your game and if you can play right. you're in the game Okay, so give me what you would want to be remembered, uh, what, excuse me, what your long-term goal, something you want to accomplish sure. before you die. I'll, I'll, I'll be remembered like in, in the immortal no, no, words. No, something you want to accomplish no, before you die. I just want everyone to say that I played hard. Just uh, That's the way Rasheed Wallace would have said it. That's it. I don't have any, I don't have a goal before I die. I just like to see my family happy. As many people as I know, happy, mm -hmm. and the and the sport of the NBA continue to thrive. That's okay. it. And what would you like to be remembered by? You st you'd still for playing it? hard. That's so vague. You, yeah, you that's cool. I think it's vain. We're all here for a dot of time and a dot of ability to do things. That's ridiculous to be so you know ego maniacal, if you would. <laughs> that you could have an impact to be remembered for X. That's ridiculous. That's, that's human nature, you know? Nah, I think when you get older, you get more mature and you understand it. You know? So you would yeah. want... David Stern would want to be remembered for playing hard. For doing, for doing the job that I was hired in each case to do. That's all. And, and in making choices that were intelligent choices along the way personal, professional, family, etc. That's all. That's the best you can do.